How is everybody doing? <laughs> Great. How many of you are going to start a podcast? One out of a hundred. Awesome. <laughs> Everyone else leave. May I step up? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I know this is it's a pretty compressed amount of time. There's a lot that goes into creating a podcast, publishing a podcast. Uh, the good news is I'm not going to cover all of oh, it's bad news. I'm not going to cover all of the technical nitty gritty stuff. But at the end, uh, there's a resource I'm, I'm going to give you. You can go to download. It has all of the real technical stuff. The stuff that I'm going to talk about today is how to keep your podcast alive, maybe how to promote it, how to really find the, uh, the story arc in your podcast. Many of us want to reach a new audience. How many people are trying to reach a new audience with their content marketing? Right? How many people are doing content marketing? What is content marketing? It's like, what's going on? Um, the good news for us, for those of us who are just thinking about launching a podcast, there's some, some stats I grabbed from uh, Jay Baer's website. One third of Americans ages 25 to 54 listen podcasts monthly. So I look at that as we still have a lot of opportunity in the podcast. How many people listen to podcasts? There's a few of you that don't listen to the podcast, all right? 69% uh, of podcasts are consumed on mobile devices, working out, driving in your car probably, going for a walk, that kind of thing, cooking dinner. That's when I do most of my podcast listening, cleaning the house. Um, so there's a, there's a great opportunity to be connected uh, with, your, with your potential audience, your new audience. The boring part, right? The, the why. Like, it's like, you know, you have to have a goal. You have to set a plan. You're trying to lose weight, don't eat that pizza. It sucks. Not fun. Uh, but the why of a podcast is super important. And I'll tell you why the why is important. It's because running a podcast, for those of you who maybe have attempted it in the past and trying to do it again, you can get burned out doing it. Right? And I, you know, I, the thing what they say is if you can get through the first 10 episodes, you're super pumped up, you're really energetic about doing this thing. And then it's like episodes 10 through 30, and you're like, why am I doing this again? You have to find new guests, you have to do show notes, you have to promote it, and like nobody's listening and getting one-star reviews. Ugh. Ugh. So hopefully I talked you out of doing a podcast today, maybe. Hey. Um, but it's very important to understand the why, because it keeps you grounded, it keeps you rooted for when you're really doing, uh, when you're really in the motions of doing a podcast, and you're remembering why you're doing this. Is it money? Is it to grow that audience? Is it to drive an email list? Um, these are the things that that you're really going to go through as you uh, as you progress through your podcast. The why makes you create new content. Hopefully, this reason that you're doing a podcast is because you you want to drive more traffic to a brand. If you're somebody that works for a brand and you, and you think this is a great avenue to, to grow traffic, it is. Um, if you're looking to supplement a, a blogging business that you already have or, or a product or service that you already have, this is a great way to drive revenue. Um, Goal setting, like I just mentioned before. What is that goal that you're looking to set out with? And it's very important that you revisit that, but it's also important to know that it's going to change. Uh, my original podcast, MattReport.com, it was all about WordPress. And it, when I started it, it was just to learn what other people were doing with WordPress. Like, how are they building an agency? I was launching my agency, and at the time, I wasn't a developer. Still not a developer. Um, but I, I wasn't rooted in the WordPress community as a lot of other people were in the beginning. So I set out saying, how can I have conversations with people so that I can get to know this WordPress community? Uh, and it was a great starting point, uh, point for me. And that was the goal. That was the original intent and still is today. It very much is a roller coaster ride. Sometimes I'm just like, man, who wants to listen to people talk about WordPress all the time? Really? Right? Really? Um, so you go through those those ups and downs, and depending on what you know thing you might be talking about with your podcast, you might go through that same thing. Just be ready for that roller coaster ride, and it comes in waves. It comes in you are super pumped up about listening to your show. You have this amazing guest on. You get all of these reviews and ratings and shares, and then you get the next guest on. It's just not as doesn't hit the mark as much as the last one did. You can kind of feel like oh, this is tough. This is something that I have to keep pushing through, um, and it is to a little bit. Of a degree. What is a podcast? To me, podcasting isn't just like iTunes and Google Play. There are so many platforms out there now where we're publishing stories, and it's in the form of social media, it's in the form of Instagram stories, it's in the form of your YouTube channel, it's in the form of your Facebook Live stuff. It's exhausting, right? It's exhausting. But it's something that has to be 
to be done or can be done to supplement your audio podcast. So for me, it's, it's really about publishing the message. So for those of you that are in the audience thinking about launching that podcast, and they're saying, oh man, it's so technical to do all this stuff, I have to go to iTunes, how do I do that? It doesn't always have to be that formal way when you launch. It can be just your Instagram stories, or it can be just a YouTube channel in the beginning. And then you can launch this into a greater, uh, you know, your own platform called the podcast. So it's all about broadcasting. It's everywhere that you can be. And one of the things that I've been investing a lot more into this year is, is YouTube, right? Doing a lot more on YouTube because I don't know what. <laughs> I just know that there's a lot of people going back into, into YouTube. It was something that I started years ago. And I said, you know, this, this audio thing is great, but I need to supplement it with video. And I'm not cool, I'm not going to be on Snapchat, you know, even, I don't even know how to use Instagram anymore. I see all these swipe left, pull up stickers, it's just too complicated for me. YouTube, I can just create a video and upload it, same thing with a podcast. I can just create an audio episode and upload it. So while I was making this presentation, I asked a whole bunch of people online about what, what is it that they would want to hear me talk about, about creating a podcast. And a lot of it... A lot of folks said, how, how do I find the confidence to do it? How do I get somebody on the show? I, I don't know somebody. Um, I don't know anybody in my particular field, but I want to start having these conversations. And number one, you know, marketers ruin everything. I, I can't have said that. It might have been Gary Vee or somebody else. But marketers, when they're, when they're putting together their listicles of how to start a podcast, and all, it's just very sterile. It's just very, you know, follow this system. Um, to me... I just love having conversations with people, and that's it. Like that's why I do the podcast. It's there's no, there's no real monetary gain for it for me. I'm not trying to grow an email list. I just love it. I just love having the conversations, and that really just helps me keep doing it. Right? It helps me find people that I'm, I'm interested in to have a conversation with, and I just ask them. Uh, when I started the first episode of MapWorld, which was like five or six years ago, my first guest was Jesse Friedman, who spoke. A couple, a couple hours ago, he was the only guest I knew. Right? He was like the first person I knew in the WordPress space. And then from the next ten, ten episodes on, it was just people I had just followed on Twitter. I just said, hey, want to be on this podcast thing? Talk about WordPress? And we're like, yeah, sure, no problem. It's just having the, the confidence to ask and, and know that, you know what, we're all trying to achieve the same thing in this conversation. Um, if it's about WordPress, we're all trying to learn a little bit more. So having the confidence to ask people is just finding it within you to say, look, we're all on common ground, let's have a conversation. So like I said, I did it my way. These are the three things, really, that still drive me today. Be interested and be curious, just ask, and find a way to help and entertain others. So if any of you have been listening to podcasts for a while, there's a podcast out there called Mixergy. I started listening to Andrew Warner. Uh, years ago, and when I started my first, very, very first episode, I copied him exactly to a team. The way he did his introduction, the way he introduced his guests, the way he broke for like an ad slot. I think I was, I was maybe just making an ad for myself because at the time I didn't have any sponsors, I didn't have any products. Um, so I was just doing everything exactly the way he did it. Even the camera angle was exactly the same way. Um, and I found that you know over time it's fine to start by looking at what others are doing and be influenced by them, but finding, finding your way, finding your voice, no pun intended, um, to do it your way. I'm interested and curious. I'm always the dumbest person in the room. I don't know a lot of things, so I ask questions. And that's why I have conversations with people. I'm generally interested and I'm generally curious on how people do things. Just ask, we covered that, just asking people, hey, do you want to be on the show? A lot of people want to promote themselves, get the word out for whatever their product or service is, so it's generally a great fit. Finding a way to help and entertain others is something that I found to be my sticking point with doing podcasting. Um, we'll talk about this in a little bit, like how do you measure the success of a podcast, is the podcast successful, that kind of thing. It's really just by the feedback I get on Twitter, in person, uh, people send me notes and they say they love the podcast, they love what they've learned, and, and that's it. Like that's where it ends for me, that's all I need to keep doing what I do. Um, but at some point, you want to try to entertain people just a little bit, right? Think about what podcasts you listen to. Um, after a while, if it's just how-to content or if it's just 
like developers speak, that kind of thing, uh, it can get probably pretty boring. So you want to try to at least entertain people. And that's just the model uh, that I've done uh, with for, for quite some time. Thinking outside of the audio file. So these are things that I start to think about when I'm creating an episode is, is this going to be the same thing over and over again? Am I asking the same questions? When I think about my own story arc of creating a podcast, I went from copying Andrew Warner of Mixergy, and there was a guy, um, uh, Entrepreneurs on Fire, uh, Jonathan, I can't remember his last name right now, uh, but I started copying his lightning round uh, set of questions, and I noticed that a lot of podcasters were doing that. And then I started thinking, well, what else can I do besides pulling in these, you know, being influenced by these other entertaining shows? Um, and at one point, I created the Matterport Startup Challenge. So it was like Shark Tank for WordPress. Uh, and it was just having a round table of people who were launching their businesses uh, with a guest panel of judges. There were no winnings, there, were no, there was no money earned, but it was uh, great education um, and, a, and a great feedback for the entrepreneurs. So you have the uh, freedom to do whatever you want with a podcast. And I think that that's inherently why I am drawn to doing podcasts, because it's a creative outlet. It doesn't always have to be the same way. You get to own that experience. You get to own that connection with somebody. You're having a conversation. You're having a conversation your way. And hopefully you're connecting with the audience. It's why I love podcasting on WordPress, because you own the content on WordPress, and that's sort of the whole connection here for me. Getting guests, asking for reviews, keeping the, the conversation moving. These are all things that are in play while you're having, while your show is live, right? While you're talking to your current guest, uh, or you're doing a live stream, or you're doing a round, a round table. You're always uh, looking for that next, next guest by asking the people that you're talking to right then and there, uh, or pulling your audience and saying, hey, how do I, who do you want to see on the show? Who can you recommend? Uh, that used to be one of the staple questions uh, of my early days of doing a podcast is who would you recommend to be on the show? Asking for reviews, everybody here's it. How many people actually left reviews on a podcast? <laughs> Nobody. Oh boy. Reviews really keep us going. So if you uh, if you're planning on launching your your podcast, uh, or if you do listen to a podcast over and over again, and you ask every single time. Uh, I, I will admit it's not easy on iTunes and, and on your phone. It's like 17 clicks, and you have to like spin it around in order to leave a, a review. Uh, but that only keeps us energized. When we see a review come in, a positive comment is really great. Keeping the conversation moving is another staple too. When you're doing something with uh, multiple people, how many people have tuned into a podcast, a roundtable of experts? It's like seven people, and it takes like a half an hour to get through everybody's like introductions. Just keep the conversation moving, right? As the host, this is like the, this is like the probably number one or number two piece of advice I have for orchestrating one or for being the person in the head of a podcast is make that super fast. You do the introductions for them. Tell them they've got ten seconds. Like it's always thinking about your audience. Um, that's the way I approach it. Trying to think of it as if I were listening to this, let's just get through the good stuff. Putting your audience first. Um, this is stuff that you know is a no-brainer, but you can kind of get lost in just asking questions that only you're curious about, and that's fine. Um, but eventually, you want to start polling your audience and asking them, "Hey, how do you want me to, to shape the show?" Um, and getting people, you know, engaged with that kind of thing. What I used to do um, way back in the day—well, it's not way back in the day—but at one point, I had somebody who was a an avid listener of the show, and she wanted to be more of like a producer, right? She said, hey, I, I really love the show so much. Would you want to put me out there to interview guests for you? That was a great way to bring somebody in that, number one, they were listening to the show every day or every week that I published, um, but they were also out there asking curious questions that you wouldn't have thought of, right? So you, can, you kind of enhance your podcast by bringing on a producer and being more, you know, Hollywood-like if you will. Uh, that's a great way to do it. So let's talk about just tying this stuff all to WordPress. If you're somebody who watches a YouTube channel, let's say, let's use that as an example, you can, you can hear from a lot of YouTubers that it's getting harder and harder to make money on YouTube, right? The ad revenue is going away, there's an ad popular thing, and people aren't watching all the time, people aren't advertising much. 
Uh, there's a platform called Patreon, if anybody's heard of that, where you can kind of donate to people monthly recurring. For me, that's great. I think it's great for a lot of creators who aren't technical or don't really run their own .com website or, or whatever they might have. WordPress gives you that flexibility, right? It gives you that flexibility to take this traffic that you're generating and create an awesome community, a membership forum, or you know, membership content only, that kind of thing. You can use something like easy digital downloads to sell your own ebook or you know, create a product that you want somebody to download. You can sell it consulting services. You can do this all within WordPress and you own that platform. Uh, if anybody has followed me before, I have strong feelings against platforms. Some of them are good, some of them are really bad. Uh, we see this with you know, things like Facebook, where they shift their business model, and now you have to shift the way that you connect with an audience. I like to bring this all back to WordPress because I can own this platform. Right? This is my content, my data, uh, and my users that come uh, to the site, and I want to be able to monetize it my way, control the experience my way. Uh, and that's why I'm a proponent of doing uh, podcasting with a WordPress website. It's this whole like art versus livelihood versus platform uh, dilemma that I see a lot of people do so, go through. So there's a lot of artists on YouTube that create awesome, engaging videos, and then they have a really hard time monetizing it because they're on the YouTube platform and it, they just don't know how to hook into this WordPress thing and own the traffic. Uh, and I think we can make strides uh, that way. Is anybody thinking about Monetizing, creating your own product, creating a membership site, one or two people, free. Um, it's, it's an awesome way to do it, right? I think it's the smartest way to do it uh, versus giving it all to the platforms. I'm going to go into some quick tips. That was more sort of broad strokes. And now we're going to go into some tips and then hopefully enough time for answering some questions and even showing you some uh, back end stuff of what I have set up on a couple of other websites. How many people read transcripts on podcasts? All right, awesome. Uh, show notes and stuff like that. Uh, Rev.com, Temi.com, I think that's how you pronounce it, Temi.com. Um, these two websites are super fast, super affordable uh, for doing transcripts. Um, you know, folks that monetize their shows, people that run ads or have sponsors, you're more likely to see transcripts and show notes being done more, uh, more consistently uh, because it does cost money. I mean, I think. If it's like a 45 to 60 minute show, both of these top websites here might run you about 20 bucks, 25 bucks to get a transcript made roughly, to get what the costs are. Um, so there's there's some hard costs there. Uh, so if you're doing four episodes a month, you're talking about 100 bucks a month and just doing transcripts, you know, not counting everything else that you might do. Um, you can do you can hire somebody. Um, hiring somebody can come from your audience. I don't know why the bullet points didn't come. In. But you can hire somebody from your audience um, to do show notes for you. This is something that I've done in the past where people have just come to me and said, hey, again, super, super fan, listen to the show a lot. You want somebody to write show notes for you because I like doing it. Um, it's another great way to do it. You can get third-party service to do stuff like this. I think it's podcast motor for a little bit on the higher side uh, of expense, but they'll do like all the stuff for you. They'll do the transcripts, they'll do the show notes. Um, and you can go either way with it. But roughly what I've found is if you're trying to do transcripts and show notes, you're probably looking at fifty to seventy-five dollars per episode, just for those costs, right? Never mind some of the other stuff that we'll talk about here. So, um, while I think it's great for accessibility and everybody should get these uh, up on their sites, it's not feasible for some people. Costs a little bit of money. Production, intros, and making it sound good. I'm a fan of Adobe Audition. I'm locked into the CC 30 bucks a month thing, so I don't really have a choice. I'm going to use what I have. <laughs> uh, but uh, Adobe Audition does a great job. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty big learning curve. Uh, again, it's stuff that I'm still you know, working with years later. Uh, but it can really make your podcast sound a lot better by cleaning up background noise and adjusting uh, the types of tones in the, in the voice, and especially when you're interviewing somebody over Skype or Zoom, that kind of thing. Uh, but for most of us, GarageBand also works just as fine. Uh, it's just not going to have some of the scientific things that Adobe Audition has. Uh, if you're not on Mac, uh, Audacity, which also runs on Mac. Uh, but if you're on Windows, Audacity is another free audio editor. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff is going to come with some learning curve stuff, but um, it's easy to chop, edit, and cut things out uh, of your podcast for this. 
Uh, music Radio Creative is a website. I should have put musicradiocreative.com. Um, this is a site where you can get voiceovers from people from all over the world, uh, male and female, uh, different tones. They can lay it on top of music if you want. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more professional for your intro or outro uh, for your podcast, Music Radio Creative uh, is a great source for that. Don't throw anything at me. Fiverr.com. Sometimes for voiceovers, you can do good. I wouldn't use Fiverr for really anything else, but for voiceover people to do intros, I've had some success there. But I certainly wouldn't have an Adobe website. Um, music for Makers. Uh, this is a, a gentleman that I interviewed, I think he's in, outside of San Francisco. Uh, Musicformakers.com, he just makes audio tracks. Every week he releases a free one, uh, and I think it might be $100 a year for access to all of his music. Um, so if you're looking for you know, intro music, outro music, and you do some other creative things within your podcast, uh, it's a great source of music. Uh, and he's a one-man band. And he uses easy digital downloads. That's how I found it. Uh, so he's supporting the WordPress cause. Seasons, story arc, and creativity. Um, seasons really relieve pressure, right? I know we get it all up in arms when we're like, ah, oh, Game of Thrones is not going to come back for another two years. Ugh. But it takes time, right, to like create this stuff. We always want these episodes thrown at us super fast. Uh, it's, it's not so different in the podcasting world where when you're doing it over and over and over again, there's no real break. Uh, there's no real break to introduce a new storyline or uh, to pivot and to cover new topics. Um, I'm going on my eighth season, uh, and I haven't published an episode probably since the start of the summertime. I took this summer off. I'm going into the fall, start releasing new episodes. Um, but it allows me to set the tone of a new season. It just allows me to adjust a little bit, right? There are people who just pound away every week. It's very, you know, it's very, uh, you know, news topical stuff or where they're at in their business. Uh, it's great if you want to uh, pursue that route. But for me, I like to have some kind of leading story arc. Um, season eight should be all about uh, some of the changes in the WordPress uh, business market space. It's a great way to rest. It's a great way to reset and find others that, to host gap seasons for you. So there are, again, going back to the audience, once you start to produce a podcast and get it out there, uh, folks want to help you out. And what I've often done is when I take a break personally from podcasting, is I bring on other people from the community to host little gap seasons, right? Bring on people, uh, voices that people don't necessarily hear from all the time, or people that have strong opinions about WordPress and the WordPress space, and I let them host it. And, and that's always fun, it gives uh, our listeners um, a chance to hear from new people, and sometimes I have people post the show uh, when I'm on, on, a, on, a, on a time off. Plugins and services. Again, you'll be able to get these slides when I'm done, uh, and another resource in here that has a lot of the stuff in greater detail. Uh, seriously simple podcasting plugin. Let me, let me take a step back. For me, there's only really two options to go with, with plugins. It's either seriously simple podcasting or PowerPress. Um, seriously simple podcasting is seriously simple. It's so easy. If we have a moment, I can show you how to set it up on one uh, of the other sites. Cast OS is their hosted solution if you want to host files with them. They get some other great things in there like statistics and listener account and that kind of thing. PowerPress is probably just the big leagues, the big leagues of uh, podcasting plugins. It's a lot more technical to set up. Seriously difficult podcast plugin? No. Uh, it's, it's a lot more difficult, but it's got all the bells and whistles in there. If you're very, very concerned with, you know, metadata, SEO ranking, uh, connecting to every possible, you know, podcasting outlet, uh, PowerPress uh, is the way to go. Uh, and their Blueberry network, there is no E in their name, by the way, it's not a typo. Uh, the Blueberry network is where you can go to host their files, and they have great support, right? Uh, I originally had hosted my files on Amazon S3 using uh, the PowerPress plugin. And then the cost just got too great on Amazon S3, where I was able to pay 50 bucks a month at, at the Blueberry Network and save a boatload of money by switching to Blueberry Network. Uh, and then SoundCloud. SoundCloud is just another place to put audio files, uh, and this is a great way to sort of uh, publish into a greater uh, footprint. And I also, you know, publish over there as well. People can subscribe to SoundCloud, and you get a bunch of cool stats there as well. I know I don't really like platforms, but Anchor FM is one of these up-and-coming 
podcasting platforms. You can host and start a podcast for free, but you are a pod, you are you are a platform. I don't know what happens if they ever pivot and change their model and free goes away. Um, but it's a great way to put up maybe smaller clips of your uh, of your podcast or put some like bonus material over there because they might have some other monetization features. Does anybody use Anchor FM? Here? Nobody. Something going. Whoops. I don't know how they get there. Stuck in the middle. But for those of you who are interested, I'll just give you a microphone to choose. <laughs> I know some of you are out there that are thinking that. You can start super affordable. Um, one of my podcasting logos got stuck up there. I'm sorry about that. But the Audio Technica ATR 2100 USB. 64 bucks. Plugs right into your laptop. Sounds pretty darn good. And if you ever upgrade to like a mixer, and you're going to have a whole bunch of people uh, in a room doing a podcast, they can use XLR cables. The one that you can't see because of my logo is the blue microphone from the Yeti, blue Yeti microphone. Uh, a little bit more expensive, sounds really good, plugs into USB. Um, yeah, it's just, they're great tools. For any of you that are about an hour south of here, I run a podcast called We Are Here Podcast, you get at southcoast.fm, but the example shown here is uh, I've been running the Matterport for so long, I said I want to do something more local, I want to do something that highlights entrepreneurship in the South Coast Mass region. And one of the things I do is always sort of just a pain point with the Matterport is having consistent branding across, you know, mobile devices where most people are listening to reading the show notes and clicking on the episode on my website and having consistent branding. Um, and when, before I launched this, I just met up with one of the local graphic designers down in the South Coast area. She created me a whole bunch uh, of assets that I can use on my Facebook temp, on my Facebook pages, my YouTube pages. Uh, more importantly, uh, nice, big, and bold on the iPhone. So when you're searching through it in iTunes, you can find it. And I would definitely recommend if you're getting really serious about doing this, uh, that branding is is uber important. I know it's been said a lot in a lot of other areas, um, but get some assets made uh, for all of the different i uh, the different podcasts places that you would be. Again, iTunes and Google Play being the major ones, but think about other areas like YouTube, SoundCloud, and other places that you might end up. Uh, I wrote this book with a friend of mine uh, about a year and a half ago. It's the podcastbook.com. It has way more information technically on how to produce a podcast, uh, technical recommendations on microphones, different levels of uh, audio testing things that we did. Podcastbook.com, you can get 100% free. It's not a gimmick, it's not a lead into anything else, uh, but it has all the more technical details in here. If you go to podcastbook.com and use the coupon code WCBOSTON2018, you can download that puppy for free. Matt McGill's on Twitter, Matt Report, Pagely.com, great hosting company that I work for. And if you want these slides, it's MattReport.com slash slides. You can download these slides. I have 10 minutes, which is perfect, because I'm just going to hit escape right here. I just want to show you how super lightweight this WordPress website is, to get an idea of it. So this is the We Are Here podcast, um, super lightweight theme. I'm only publishing podcast episodes up here, so I know I'm not going to be doing anything crazy. I won't do any membership stuff, uh, so it doesn't look like the, uh, the dumpster fire that is the back end of patentreport.com. Um, so it's just all about... You know, branding the podcast, getting the featured images up here. And this is one of the things. So this is one, this is why I think it's so important to try to set your branding in motion early on. Because the Matterport is like, I'm, I never did this. I never sat down, created branding, had a template ready to roll. And I was always like, record a podcast, spend a couple hours talking to somebody, spend an hour or so editing it. Then you write the show notes yourself, let's say, and you're just like, ugh, man, this is tough. It's a lot of work. And then the last thing you want to do is pick a featured image out and then put text on it and try to make it look good. So setting your brand in motion early, uh, those examples that I showed you in that last slide, uh, just go up there real quick, I'm, a I'm able to just easily go in and take somebody's image, grab it from them, throw it in here, and it looks pretty good, and I just edit the episode title. Um, the back end for this website is eight plugins. So a Kismet for anti-spam. Uh, easy forms for MailChimp, just to connect people up to 
uh, sign up for the newsletter. So if they go to slash subscribe. Just super easy, because most people are going to be on their phones. Drop in your email, uh, and then click on the links to access the, the different uh, publishing outlets. Uh, Jetpack, Jesse just talked about that. Primarily use this for stats, because I don't even have Google Analytics hooked up to this. It's just overkill for what I need. It's a small, very focused podcast, so if I can just see who's visiting through Jetpack stats, it makes it easy for me. Uh, mail gun, just because I want to make sure that the uh, forms get delivered to me. Ninja forms for a contact form. Seed Prod Viral Giveaway Pro. This is really cool. Uh, I forgot all about this. And it's seriously simple podcasting uh, for, the, uh, for the podcast tool. And what I do is <clears throat> I actually publish it on CastOS, which is their hosted platform. And then I just grab the little embed code from the CastOS website. I just drop in the, uh, I just drop in the player right to the, right to the uh, body of the content. And I just write a quick little snippet about what this is. Um, and people can listen to it right here. One of the things I did when I launched this, uh, again, right before the uh, summertime, is each store owner, because I'm highlighting the small local businesses, most of them are store owners or service-based businesses, um, I use this tool called the Viral Giveaway Pro. It's by Seedfrog. And I just create little giveaways. So this is a great way to, I think you'll be able to see it unless this is closed down already. Yeah, so it's not gonna, you're not gonna see the form entry fields, but basically what I'm able to do is people are able to go in and put their uh, email in and share it with friends uh, to spread the word and then win a chance to get uh, a gift card from whatever uh, entrepreneur I might be uh, interviewing in that episode. Um, so that's a cool little way to, when I just started launching, to have more traffic come to the site. People are a little bit interested, and I know giveaways usually get bad, um, you get like just leads that aren't good, they're just there for the giveaway. Uh, but I felt like in a local market, people know these entrepreneurs. Uh, they're generally interested to learn about them. Uh, I felt like it was a good fit, uh, with a good success rate. And I've grown the email list probably up to 200 people so far. Uh, it's only been about four or five episodes. Uh, that's pretty good for the South Coast. Anybody in the South Coast area? Oh, cool. Nice. Awesome. So I'll leave it up to questions. Anybody has questions about it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they make it seriously simple. Um, I don't know if I. Yeah, as long as the, the cars can get, um, as long as it's subscribing to those, uh, the RSS feeds, or it can't subscribe to an RSS feed, uh, then, uh, then it, sh it should be able to. Um, yeah, so this is, this is their posted version. This is just the first five episodes that I put out. Um, uh, uh, so this does all the, the, the heavy heavy work for you. Let me go into the details. That's what I want to see. Yeah, so it's this main podcast RSS feed right here. And this is what you drop into either iTunes, Google Play, or a, another service that might syndicate your, your episodes. Uh, but again, this is CastOS. It's, it's very lightweight. You upload your cover image. Put your names and stuff in there, and you're off to the races. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question about podcasts versus some of the smaller radio stations that do a lot of the same sort of thing. And my question is, at what point should you be paid for your podcast and the guests that come on for this way, I think I understand, versus um, having to pay for that production? Because I think you mentioned Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, the, the meat of that question is, you know, maybe how to monetize your podcast and when do you do it, should you do it, that kind of thing. Um, if I were to go back up to something like this, from my experience, I mean, I'm not a high production podcast. I'm not sending it out to get, uh, you know, run through a, a real audio editor, right? So often I consult with people and, and I consult with a local state rep in my area. And I said, we should really do a podcast with the topics that you talk about because you're great. And she goes, yeah, I was listening to that serial podcast. I'd, I'd like to do something, you know, like that with your sound effects and like this all this motion. I'm like, yeah. It's about a million dollars, like, to do stuff like that. This is not, this is not easy work. 
Um, you know, you really have to ask yourself, in the early days, I never did transcripts, I never did show notes. It was just the, 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 the sweat equity of doing it myself. Um, you really just have to find out, you know, do you want to be paid for the time that you put in? Do you really need to do show notes? Do you really need to do transcripts? Um, I think at some point you get big enough and you can go out and start asking for sponsorship money. I have a, a lot of thoughts about that because I used to sponsor the Matterport podcast. It was, I don't want to say it was easy to get money, but because it's such a, a, a niche market, I was, and I built up a, enough of a reputation over the years, I was able to turn to people like Patreon, where I work now, um, Liquid Web, and other folks that had uh, iThemes and easy digital downloads. I was able to ask them for money and to sponsor a show. And I think if you were looking to start a WordPress podcast now, there's a lot out there, and I think roughly people are charging maybe about $100 to $300 an episode for an ad spot. Depends on you know who that person is and what they're going after. Um, I don't think the same dollars translate to if you turn to like, I don't know, Gillette. So hey, I get 10,000 episodes, I get 10,000 downloads a month, 300 bucks a month, they're not even gonna talk to you, right? Um, I think it's smart because, like I mentioned earlier, it does become a lot of work. And if you're a solo person out there, you're a freelancer, or you're running a small agency, you have so much other stuff going on that you eventually hit a wall. If you're doing it, you're one person shop, doing it all yourself, you're like, God, I gotta outsource some of this stuff. Uh, and if you can do some, if you can get somebody to do show notes, um, you know, the woman that does it for me, it's, it's 45 bucks an episode, right? It's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me because I would sit there for like two hours staring at the screen like, I can't remember what this conversation was again. I can write this out. I can't even spell words. So I would rather just give it to somebody else to do. Uh, but being able to get to a point where you're big enough to, to hire somebody is definitely uh, a longer stride. It took me about two or three years to even really start to consider spending a couple hundred bucks a month on producing this stuff. I hope that sort of answers your question. But, but, but how do you use the local community radio stations? Oh. You're really there for yeah, I've never used a local radio station to do that, to do anything. Community radio station. Yeah. Then you have the facilities. Yeah. And if you go into these, these facilities, that's essentially what they're doing. Yeah. And, and their cost sounds like it may be less than the price you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, if they provide, I've never explored that option, um, but if they provide some kind of like production and editing work for, for stuff like this, that's, that's pretty cool. They certainly do that. I don't know if they do yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What's the typical timing of a podcast? Is it an hour on a week usually? And then what about voices? You have to have, you know, I listen to some of these, and they have phenomenal voices. You know, they're not going to necessarily make you want to listen to me, this whole person. You know? sure. But what goes on with that? Is yeah. I have somebody else speak for me, actually, because I hate my own voice. <laughs> uh, so the question is, what you know, what do you do about your voice? Uh, how long should I should a, an episode be? I'm done. <laughs> uh, so it totally depends on what your podcast is. Um, I launched a podcast that was just five minutes. Um, others do three hours. I do hate my own voice, but I just roll with it, and it seems to work for five years. If anybody wants to talk after, I'm happy to answer. Them.